Hey folks, how you doing? Bob and Joe here. Well, it's Sunday night. I had to leave the house early. I normally don't leave the house on weekends until Monday morning about 8 o'clock. 7 o'clock is pretty early. I uh, left tonight about 7 o'clock. But it's rainy. Uh, a little chilly. It's 67. But it's that rain chill in there. Has been all weekend. Uh, and I've got an early pickup. I got two drops and early pickup. And I didn't want to have to get up super early my time at the house, literally four or five o'clock, so that I could be rolling by six o'clock, so I could deal with the morning Houston rush hour traffic in the rain. So I slapped Mama a couple times, lined her out. I headed on in. Stuff be tightened up in the morning, so I'm here when they open the gates. I'll be the first one. So I'll set my alarm for 6.30. They literally don't get here until 8. That's their official time. Uh, when I called to find out if they had parking Friday, she told me that, uh, yeah, we got a long driveway. Boy, did they. And I've been here before. I just faced them out. I'll remember them now. Uh... And I said, well, what time they start receiving? Well, people start showing up about 7.30. When they open that gate, I want to go ahead and drive around and get in position and let them know I'm sitting there patiently waiting. It is what it is. Uh, I've talked to the guy with the radio show a couple of times. We are uh, talking, getting to know each other a little better. It looks like the radio show will be a go. And, uh, we go ahead and turn this off. Let's try and charge up my batteries. Wow. I bet that makes a difference on the video. I have watched it, see how much it makes. But, uh, me and the guy with the truck show, we've been talking, or with the radio show, we've been talking. And, uh, we have elected to go on with it. He's wanting to set an official start date of not this coming Saturday night, but the following Saturday night. He still has stuff he needs to do. This will be a grassroots outfit or a program. He uh, done a couple of things before, but uh, he had got out of it and he wants to do it again. And he's a truck driver. So it ain't like he's some big fancy radio station or nothing. Uh, it will be an internet radio station. Nomad radio is what it's called. I have, I'll have i get you more information later on. Uh, he's going to have where you can listen online. Or you can call into a certain number and listen to it on your phone. There will be call in lines. Uh, I made mention to him that I have people around the world. I've got a couple of drivers in Canada, Australia, UK, Ireland, uh, stuff like that. So if any of you guys are drivers, I don't know if you're all guys, uh, but if any of you drivers want to call in, I've done mention you and wanted you to have access to be able to call in if you want to call in. And he said he didn't know if he could do it on regular phone line, but he'll see about setting up a Skype so that if you want to call, you can call in on Skype. So if that interests you, download some Skype or download the Skype app or whatever you want to call it. And uh, we'll just see where it goes. Uh, I think he told me he's been driving between 30 and 35 years. Uh, I think he said 35, actually, uh, on that Nomad radio, he, uh, and I just got rid of his post, too, or his message. There it is. Nomad radio 
dot XYZ. I don't know if it's going to give me the uh, dead gummit. Radios are a pain in her phones are a pain in the butt. No, I don't want to message him. I want you to open that link up. Link up. And I'll see if I can. I don't know how to. It says nomadradio.xyz. Let's see. It says a share button. I'll try to share that in my group. Don't mind me while I stumble through this. Let's see. Do it there. Let's go there first. And it's public. Done. Now I will have to go into my Facebook wall and try to share it over to this Facebook wall. But anyway, there's not much there. Uh, there's a video of him. It's not a real good one in my opinion. We talked about that. One of them bugs he has to work out. Because it's really little narrow thing. But you want to hear him anyway. It doesn't matter if you really look at another truck driver. Uh, but just video on them, him talking a little bit about this. And he's starting to get it set up. So, and that's why he needs time. And I told him, dude, it don't matter. If you're ready this Saturday and you want to do it, let me know. If it's the uh, following Saturday before you're ready, that's fine. If it's the following Saturday after that, that's fine too. I don't care. Yeah, I really don't. <coughs> I am, uh, <coughs> I'm a little excited to do it. I'm a little apprehensive as well. Because it will be live radio. Uh, we will be talking to people live. And uh, I did tell him, I said, you know, I, I don't want it to turn into a cussing thing. I said, if they come on there cussing and being stupid, I said, you're going to be able to delete them or hang up on them? He said, yep. Well, there won't be any screening. But he says he will be fast on the disconnect button if somebody gets on there being stupid. I said, that'll work. That's all I ask. So, uh, we'll see. He uh, made mention of one of my nemesis that has been being a pain in my butt, who will remain nameless at this moment. And uh, he said he had talked to him over a year ago. Uh, about doing this, and he said he wouldn't quit being stupid long enough. And uh, he said to him, being stupid and a clown is more important, and that ain't what he wanted for a talk show. So he's been waiting and watching and looking all the uh, YouTube channels over, and he found me. So it's cool, and that is a compliment to me. So yeah, I'm a little excited about a little apprehensive. It's it's a little scary, nothing drastic, you know. It ain't like I'm, oh, I'm falling apart. But uh, it ain't no more than somebody would have to go to coming out of here driving a truck for the first time. Or it ain't nothing more than like me starting that YouTube channel. So uh, he has a little bit of experience like me. He has a son that is a computer geek that will be helping him out. So... Uh, We'll see how it all rolls. You know, it is what it is. We'll see how it rolls. So, uh, didn't do anything at the house to make videos about. Saturday, I wound up helping other people out and didn't get nothing done for me. That happens. Uh, today, me and Mama did some cooking and just chilled out. I kept trying to force myself to get out of that recliner and go do something in the garage or something. And we was both like, nah, need at least a day off. Uh, let's see. Friday night when we got home, we did up some uh, hamburger dish. Hamburgers and noodles. 
I brought a couple of them out here with a little corn and green beans with them. So I got two meals there. Uh, Saturday, I got up Saturday morning and I took some chicken fajita meat, put it in a slow cooker, cooker, crooker. I put it in a crooker and uh, I started it on high, of course, and turned it down when we went to leave. I thought we was going to be gone six or eight hours. We was gone more like 10 or 12. And our puppy dogs was mad at us when we got home. And no, we don't yell at them if they wind up going potty in the house when we're gone. If they can't get out, it ain't their fault. It's our fault. Uh, but anyway, I did that chicken fajita with onion and bell pepper. Boy, did it get cooked done. It's done. So, uh, we had that for a late night Saturday. Uh, we'd planned on having Spanish rice and refried beans, but we was hungry and we said to heck with the Spanish rice. It was going to take too long to make. So we just did beans and fajita meat. Uh, now, uh, I'd cooked quite a bit of it, so I fixed me up some three dishes of it to come out here with me. And, uh, we went ahead today and cooked that Spanish rice. And of course, I bring some and I leave some at home for mama. It's hard to cook for one. We used to do this in Georgia all the time, so we've got to get back in practice of it. And uh, where we'd cook enough for a meal or so while we're there home together, I would bring some, leave her some. And uh, it worked out pretty good. Uh, let's see. Now we did the rice today, so I've got my chicken fajitas with uh, refried beans and Spanish rice, and I got three dishes of them. So that's five meals I brought out, and I brought out two dishes of chicken and yellow rice that she makes. Do I bring two or three? I think two. So uh, which I've got one set up back here for me for tonight. Uh. Our son had shared a recipe with us for a cake. He likes bacon mostly. And I, he, he's a decent cook, but he enjoys bacon more than anything. Well, he likes bacon and he likes bacon. And he'll put bacon on most anything and he'll bake most anything. Uh, but this was a, yellow, a white cake recipe with uh, cherry jello and and. You make it with seven up and cherry juice and you know and all this stuff. Uh yeah. It's edible. I wasn't that crazy about it. Kinda like that fajita meat. Me and the wife both agreed, eh. It's edible, but it wasn't impressive. It was some packaged chicken fajita meat I got out of the store. I'm one that one I uh walking in a store and I see a sale on something, I'll grab it. And evidently somewhere along the line, I seen that chicken fajita and I wanted to try it. <coughs> I was not impressed. So, uh, now how much of it was because it was the chicken fajita out of one of them pre-packages, you know, the, where you just get some big meat package and cook it. It was marinating in whatever it was marinating in. Or was it because it cooked so dead gum long? Could go either way. You can cook the flavor out of shit. Uh, out of stuff. Uh, so we uh, also had laid out a big old bag of leg quarters. And uh, we did those up today. And my wife makes chicken and yellow rice. And we love it. And so we made a big pot of that. And we had some chicken left over. That we, we cooked chicken left over that we threw in the freezer. Who knows what we'll do with it. But it's in the freezer. So, and I think I brought two of those. So I've got like six or seven meals. Uh, <clears throat> I also did some of my breakfast sandwiches, which they, I think there's a video about them. If you go to the cooking, I have a couple of different things I do. Some little muffins that I do. <clears throat> and then I have another bigger one that I do to make sandwiches out of. Dead gumming, I forgot mayonnaise and cheese. I might have, now I'm probably out of mayonnaise, so I have to 
get some mayonnaise along the way. I don't know that I'll buy cheese out of a truck stop. It could probably get pricier than I want to pay. We'll see. But uh, I made up the big square egg and sausage breakfast things. And normally I put grated cheese in them. And the wife asked me after I stuck them in the oven. I was talking to a buddy of mine <coughs> on the phone while I was doing it. And I totally spaced it out. Go figure. Uh, so these don't have cheese in them, but I brought out like four or five mornings worth of that. The trick to running regional is to try to cut down on your expenses. Now, uh, one guy I was talking to, uh, one, uh, guy named James, the guy I'm doing the radio show with, company he drives for, and it'll be up to him if he tells you who he drives for, uh, he had to take a cut in wages to go regional. He's on a bid run, a relay. I didn't take a cut in wages, but if I'm not on top of my game, I'll take a pretty drastic cut in miles. So I'm trying to stay on my game. That's why I'm here tonight and getting a jump start on next week. I don't want to start out underneath the ball or uh, underneath the hammer or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I want to uh, wake up here and be able to rock and roll. So I got to be on top of my game to get as many miles a week as I can. <coughs> uh, with vacation or the short week before, the short week after it. Uh, money's a little skinny right now. And uh, which ain't it always. Do you ever have enough? Nobody that I know does. Hell, even the rich people don't. They have millions and they want more. At our expense sometimes. But the trick is, is to stay on top of your game. Get as many miles as you can. And if you're making them buy the house every week or so, bring you some vittles. I mean, to me, uh, I might average $2 a meal back there. And that's just a guess. At one time, I actually broke some of that down when I had that blog. But let's say I'm averaging $2 a meal back there. Uh, that's like I told the wife with them breakfast sandwiches. I said, I go into any truck stop and get two breakfast sandwiches. And I said, that's seven bucks. Five bucks if I'm lucky. So, uh, uh, and we all know the eating out here, if you get any kind of a meal in the truck stop, it's going to be seven ninety nine plus your trip, uh, tip, plus your tax, uh, plus your drink. So if you get away with any kind of a meal out here for less than $10, you done did good. And it's probably going to be closer to 12. So if we work off an average of 12, then I'm saving $10 a meal. So, you know, and I still have my canned goods and stuff back there. So, just trying to save a buck. Uh, sometimes you gotta, and I would rather send the money home than to eat out of truck stops anyway. Truck stop food is not good to me. It's not good for us. And uh, it's always, excuse me, it's always so plain because they have to cook for everybody. So they have to be careful of salt and pepper and this and that. And and a lot of times, if you don't put pepper on it, which I don't do salt, you don't put pepper on it, there ain't no taste. Gee, thank you. So, all right, there's an update on Papa Joe and the radio show and what's going on in my life. I will keep you posted as I know more. Remember, God loves you and so do I. Y'all have a blessed evening now. Good night.